welcome everybody to the sixth episode of our series on growing your own. Um, today's episode is called Shaping the Future, Inspiring Students to Pursue Teaching. And we have a really exciting uh, lineup for you. Um, today we have a number of student panelists who will be able to uh, discuss how they got into teaching and how Educators Rising has inspired them. Um, I'm going to turn it over now to Lisa Rollins, our Director of Outreach and Engagement, who will frame the problem for us, and then we'll turn it then over to Jose. Lisa? Thank you, Albert. Welcome, everybody. We're so glad to have you here. I'm excited to be attending my first webinar with PDK and um, hosting, and then I'll turn it over to Jose because that is the focus, students. Um, I am the Director of Outreach and Engagement here at PDK. And I am a former state advisor as well, so very versed in advising and how we can help. Next slide. As you guys know, uh, before COVID, we had a teacher shortage problem, an issue, right? Um, we have retirements. We have so many people who are now taking a different career path, deciding different things. And we need to really inspire our students. And based from the Learning Policy Institute, we need to hire more than 120,000 teachers nationally. So that's something that we at AdRising can help you in a grow your own capacity. Next slide, please. The thing is here for everyone that works at a district, we know how expensive it is to get teachers in, to get them trained, and then when they leave, that costs us money as well to replace those teachers. So according to the Learning Policy Institute, research shows it costs roughly $10,000 to replace a teacher in a rural or suburban area and $21,000 to replace a teacher in an urban area. So the costs go up in our higher populated areas. And that's a, a hard reality for a lot of our districts in terms of funding and making sure that we have those recruitment and retention policies in place. Next slide, please. Thank you. Well, we know this isn't any new news, right? It's 2021, we've been struck by COVID, we've had a lot of roadblocks and harsh realities to face in the last few years, um, but this isn't a new problem. Teacher preparation enrollments have been declining nationally since 2013, there's been an average of 35%. So we are also working with our institutes of higher learning to make sure that we're funneling in students from high school into colleges and graduating them and having them come back and teach in our in our local areas. One thing that I'm very proud of in working with Educators Rising and PDK is our drive to make sure that our teacher uh, workforce reflects the students that are sitting in the seats. Um, we really aim to recruit students of color to become teachers. And we know from the latest census data that our majority minorities are now flipping and we need to make sure that teachers see um, the importance in diversity and equity. And we also need to make sure that future teachers look like the students that they're teaching. And that's why Grow Your Own is so important because we can then say, oh, I've already gone to school in this district. I've already know what the demographics of those students are and you're better equipped to teach those students. Next slide, please. So many of you might say, what is Educators Rising? Educators Rising is a career and technical student organization. We're community-based and the chapters in your local area will feed those teacher prep courses and programs at the Institutes of Higher Education. Educators Rising can be it can look a bunch of different ways. It can be from the club level. It can be associated with the CTE, Career and Technical Education course. Um, it could be one student who just wants to join at the national level and make a movement on their own. Next slide, please. There is a lot of different things that we do to cultivate that next generation. So it's starting with a chapter. Um, which it can be, I just talked to a school today that had four students and they're ready to start the movement and they're so excited about that. So it can start from just a few students making that commitment. Um, we also offer curriculum that will help your teacher leaders um, to do the great instruction that's needed. So we take that off your plate. We offer one, three, five day lessons with project-based activities and summative assessments that will help 
uh, prepare your students for those teacher prep assessments. Um, the clinical experiences that go along with being an Ed Rising member, we offer micro credentials. And as many of you know, we have competitive events um, that are so robust and you can use those as projects in your classrooms, um, semester projects, final exam projects, you can use those competitions. They come with rubrics and an extensive detail of what the event um, entails. And then they can compete at state level and get that state recognition. And you can also then take them to the national conference, which this next year, 2022, will be in Washington, DC. So we're very excited to have all of our future educators convene for that in June of 2022. Next slide, please. One thing that's very helpful if you're not um, well versed in what it might look like to grow your own, we have a blueprint that's available that you can model a grow your own program after. And it really is it was assembled by an expert panel to create the best practices for what that will look like for your demographics in your area. Next slide, please. And now you've heard enough of adults talking. The focus of this webinar is students. So we need to know what students can teach us about educator pathway recruitment. We need to hear the student voice and that's what's important, right? Michael, next slide, please. I'd love to turn it over now to our facilitator of this amazing webinar and our 2021 Educators Rising National Student President, Jose Correa. Thank you so, so, so much, Lisa. Um, hello to everyone. It's so good to be back in the Zoom room um, with my Educators Rising family. Um, I love to call this a family because that's what it is. That's who we are as students and up here at the national level. Um, I was a 2020, 2021 Educators Rising National Student President. I currently go to Texas State University. And yeah, we'll go ahead and introduce our panelists. Um, we have two panelists as of right now. We have Paige Fisher, and then we have um, Zane McCorvey. So Zane is our 2021-2022 National Student President, so for this year. And then Paige Fisher is one of um, our members who participated in the Educators Rising Moment competition. Um, we also have another panelist who might show up, um, Aaliyah Lindsay. She also participated in the Educators Rising Moment competition. Um, she just, since she, she's a teacher right now, she did have a COVID case and she might not be able to make it, but if she hops in, it'd be great. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and get this thing started. I'm excited to hear from everyone and get this conversation going. So we'll go ahead and start with Zane, then go on to Paige. So tell us a little about, a little bit about yourself, you know, where are you from? When did you join Educators Rising and what grade level are you in? So I'll pass it over to Zane. Go ahead. Well, hi, everyone. Yeah, so my name is Zane McCorvey. I'm from Maple Heights, Ohio, which is about 20, um, 25, 30 minutes from downtown Cleveland. Um, I'm based, yeah, like I said, I'm based in Maple Heights, Ohio, where I'm a part of the Heights Career Tech Teacher Academy, um, which is my Educators Rising chapter is based in. Um, so my experience so far in education has been great. Um, I've, I've got to meet so many different people and I got to talk to so many different people. And the reason I want to join Educators Rising and join the education field is because, um, like Ms. Lisa said earlier, just that I want to see more diversity in the education field. I want to speak, see some people, you know, that looked like me. And so I believe that's the reason why I joined education, Educators Rising. Excuse me. All righty, Paige, you can go on ahead. All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, if you didn't already know, I'm Paige. I'm from Scotts Bluff, Nebraska, and I just joined Ed Rising last year, actually, in my sophomore year. I am currently a junior in high school, and I'm really excited to be here with you guys and talk to you through this webinar. This is the first webinar I have ever been a part of. Um, I suppose that I wanted to join Educators Rising because um, I wanted to become an art teacher and there's just not the greatest reputation with art teachers and that is why I joined because I just wanted to, I knew that that's what I wanted to become and I wanted to be in with like-minded people who also wanted to become 
or go into similar careers of teaching. So yeah, that's all that I have to say for right now. Thank you so much. We can go on to our next question, which is, you know, when we talk about wanting to become an educator, um, when, for example, when I'm filling out scholarships in relation to education or anything of that sort, the question always arises, who inspired you to become an educator? And most of the most of the time, in most cases, it's not a certain person. It's a certain act, you know. Um, me being a Latino, my act was seeing not seeing enough people who look like me. Um, so now I want to ask Paige and Zane. And Paige, you can go ahead and kick this off. What acts or moments inspired you to become an educator or want to become an educator? All right. So like I mentioned a little earlier, I want to become an art teacher but because um, there's just a lot of art teachers out there that just do not have the greatest repu repu um, sorry, <laughs> reputation, especially with the ones that I had in particular. I just felt like I never really learned anything for them. I didn't feel like I could really relate with them. And I was always very passionate about art. And I realized that I really liked interacting with people and I really liked to help people out with things. So I just sort of decided that one day, you know, I kind of want to combine these two things together. I want to do something which involves me working with people and which involves art. And in the end, I decided that art teacher was the path that I wanted to go down. So, yeah. All righty. Thank you so much, Paige. Zane, what about you? What acts or moments inspired you to become an educator or want to become an educator? So I think for me personally, what stuck out to me was my seventh grade year in middle school, um, which was one of the hardest years of middle school for me. But that year, we ended up having multiple, multiple history teachers, right? We ended up having multiple history teachers. And this is the first time I had ever got an African-American male teacher. He came in as a sub. And so, and then he became a long-term sub and now he ended up being our teacher. And I think, you know, that's that's what I want to see. Somebody who can teach me my history. And so I think that's what inspired me to go into education. And now he's a an assistant principal and so many more things, but, you know, just a small thing, just him coming into the classroom as a sub, you know, so he wanted to be in the classroom as a volunteer, you know, voluntarily, he took the time, you know, out of his day and come be a sub. So I think that's what made me want to join education is to give students, an idea of what they can see in other people. I love to hear. And you know, what Paige and Zane are saying is so true. These are things that we don't notice. These are things that are small instances that, you know, I know there's teachers on here, there's principals and whatnot. Um, these kinds of acts affect students. And this is what, you know, can make a big difference on one single student or multiple students. Um, so like I said, it's not just um, a certain person. It can be any single moment that can affect these students to want to become teachers. All righty. And it looks like Zane might be joining us in a little bit, but it's okay. We can still have the conversation going on. So many of you um, and Paige um, competed at the national level in Educators Rising competition. I myself competed in competitions when I was back in high school in creative lecture, public speaking, and Educators Rising moments as well. So Paige, um, tell us about your competitive event experience and how participating in national competitions made you more prepared and excited to teach and anything that you may have learned throughout your process of you know, doing this competition. Because the way I see it, when you're preparing these, for these competitions, when you go into the room, when you're presenting, when you're talking with these judges, it's not just teaching that goes into your mind. It's different ways that you can build as a character um, or you know, become a leader. So what all did you learn? All right, thank you. Um, last year was the first year that I joined Educators Rising and it was the first year that I did a competition. So <laughs> I did it a little differently than uh, Ed Rising competitions are normally done. I did it over Zoom. And I kind of had some experience with this because I was involved in speech. I had done, it was my second year of doing speech. So I was kind of prepared for it, but when I did it, there was a lot of technical difficulties in the state level and especially at the national level. It took me like 30 minutes to even be able to present. <laughs> it was a bit of a mess, but in the end, 
I feel like I performed well and it was despite having to overcome some technical difficulties I felt like it was a good experience and I really enjoyed it um I feel like being able to write down and present in front of other people why I wanted to become a teacher it really made me like sit down and think about why do I actually want to be a teacher like <laughs> I did already have ideas in my mind but doing this event it really helped form those ideas together and it really made me feel more comfortable in the career that I wanted to go into and yeah I can say that I feel a lot more confident about the um, career that I'm going to be going into because of Ed Rising moments. So yeah, that's about all I have. Awesome, thank you so much, Paige. And Zane, I think you had mentioned you participated in Ethical Dilemma, um, if I'm correct, um, or if I, I believe it was Ethical Dilemma or Insider School, something along those lines. Um, but tell me how competing in those events um, helped, made you feel more prepared and more excited to teach. Um, when we talk about ethical dilemma, you know, um, I'm not sure what the topic was, but you can go more off of that. But, you know, it's really interesting how you're able to prepare for ethical dilemma and present it in front of professionals and leaders within education. So tell us a little bit more about that. Absolutely. So, yeah, so my team and I this year, we competed in an ethical dilemma competition. Um, personally, I think this this part of the competition really spoke to me um, and just because of what the dilemma was. And so, you know, how it, it prepared me, you know, because it's, it's preparing an education system, right? It's telling us what's being taught and, and we're getting taught the right things, but are we getting taught the full truth? Um, and you know what I'm saying? So as, as a Latino or as an African-American, whatever the case may be, we're reading about these amazing people who, who did these amazing things, right? But we don't hear the whole story of how they suffered, this, that, and the third. So I think as an educator, um, as going into the ethical dilemma competition, it really prepared me into education and to see what type of teacher could I become? You know, can I be that teacher that just goes by the book? Or can I be that teacher that, you know, goes by the book, but also brings in more, more um, you know, more examples and more definitions to, so that everybody can have a clear understanding of what's being taught. I love to hear it. Thank you so much, Zane. And, and you know, that's something that I love about Educators Rising. You know, at, through these competitions, us members, you know, as students, because I still consider myself a student and a member of Educators Rising, you know, they prepare us with real questions that happen in life that, you know, we may not sugarcoat it, but, you know, we're just going to address it and what we as students can see what we can do to solve the problem. You know, we're getting the resources and we're getting asked these questions and what better way than to ask the students and, and get that student voice. You know, that's what these competitions do. And that's what I love about Educators Rising, you know, may, acknowledging that student voice through competitions, through these webinars and stuff like that. Um, we can go ahead on to the next question. So there are many, many different ways to start an Educators Rising program, whether it be through a class or as a club. Um, when I was involved in high school, it was a club and you know it was such, it was such a welcoming environment. Um, but I wanna hear from y'all, Paige and Zane. You know, we'll start off with Zane. Um, tell us the journey of how you got involved with Educators Rising in the first place. Okay, so I'll, yeah, so I'll start. So Educators Rising for me, um, at, at my school, we have various of uh, career opportunities you can go through, right? So that you auto tech or you want to be a firefighter. So we have a thing called the Heights Career Tech, right? So that's where all these things are. You know, why, why don't I go into education? Um, uh, you know, my whole family comes from educa our educators. So let's join, let me join. So me going into Teacher Academy, that's how I started. Um, the journey so far has been great. Um, uh, I've been very my, my lead teacher, Mr. Wakefield, has done a, a phenomenal job of teaching us the ways of, of a good to say. So that, that's been my journey of can see where else it takes me. That's great to hear. Um, what about you, Paige? You know, tell us about the journey of how you got involved. You say that you just joined Educators Rising. What was it like, you know, um, you, came, you joined the organization in the middle of a pandemic. How were you able to learn from it, you know, grow from it and, you know, what you have planned um, now that you're still in the organization and, you know, what's coming next for you? All right, so yes, like I said, 
in my sophomore year, last year, I joined in the midst of a pandemic. It was definitely different. <laughs> Um, a lot of the other activities that I was in at the time, I had been in before um, the pandemic, so I could see like how they were before and after the pandemic, but with Ed Rising, I was just kind of going in blind, but I was really excited because I had wanted to do this since my freshman year, but it was only for people who were sophomores and above at our school, so yeah, I was just very excited to join. And unfortunately that year, because of so many COVID restrictions, because of so many different activities others were in, um, we didn't do too much really outside of competing at the state and competing at nationals. But when we did compete and watch the conference together, it was a really fun experience. Um, I really got to bond with some of the upperclassmen because at the time I was the only sophomore <laughs> that was in Ed Rising, so I was the youngest in the group, but I felt like I was able to bond and connect with some of the upperclassmen and learn some of their opinions, some of their viewpoints on um, going into becoming a teacher for them. And yeah, it was just, it was a very good experience in that sense. Uh, this year, I am part of the Ed Rising office team. I am part of public relations. <laughs> so I wanted to do that because I wanted to help out some more. I would be, I felt like the year before I wasn't really able to do much. So I wanted to kind of make up for it by being a part of the planning and stuff for it in that way. And I do plan on competing again in state and nationals. I, <laughs> I'm not sure what event I'm going to be doing yet, but I will be doing some more research into it. But yeah, that's what I have. That's awesome to hear. You know, hearing Zane and Paige's, you know, experience of how they got involved and how they're still here today just shows, you know, these students are awesome and, you know, go through, like, they're able to persevere and still succeed within this organization. You know, there's different organizations that because of the pandemic, because of COVID-19, they potentially got smaller, some even went extinct. And it's, I love to say how Educators Rising is still here today and still has amazing students and members such as Paige and Zane who are taking on these great leadership roles and keep on contributing to this education workforce, to the field of education. Um, we can go on to the next question. So I really, really like this one. If you could be involved in starting your own, your grow your own program at your school, what would you do? Let's say you had all the resources. Um, what would you do? Who would you talk to? What would you tell students? What activities would you do? Um, and especially like see this in a way where, you know, there's people in here who might have no idea how to be involved or how to start it. Um, if you could do it once again, you know, it didn't exist. What would you do to get involved or starting a program? Um, we'll go ahead and start with Zane. Great. So I think for me, if I had my own program, you know, started to grow my program, I think first off, I would, I would you know, just get an idea of what type of students are in, my, are in the school district I'm at, right? So you want to know what type of students you are because you don't want to be teaching or you, wanna, you don't want to be trying to gather students a different way that they don't understand what's going on. Um, I think that's what my school does really well is that, you know, they try to gear you, try to, you know, try to change your path a little bit to test a little bit of everything. Um, and so, you know, just have students come in and, 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 you know, talk to them, just see what they're, what are they thinking? Um, oh, I think it's always good to just listen first. And so when me grow my own program, I just want to see and listen what type of, you know, what type of changes does the student want to see um, in their school district? Or if they were a teacher, what would they do differently? Or who would you reach out to? So for me personally, I think that's what I would do if I started doing mine was starting to listen more. I think that's what we struggle with is just head on, head first, um, which is good sometimes. Don't get me wrong. Going in head first is good sometimes. But listening and, and, you know, dissecting everything that's being said and talking to your administrators, but also talking to the students so that everybody gets a good point of view of what's going on. Paige, what about you? If you could get involved in starting a Grow Your Own program, um, what would you do? All right. I think the first thing that I would do 
would be a lot of research into this. Um, obviously, like what was mentioned earlier, there's a grow your own blueprint. I would definitely look into that. And I would definitely talk to other chapters near my area, um, how they started it, how they run it and get some ideas that way, get some help. Also like what, what, what uh, Zane was saying, I would definitely listen to the students, see what they want in Ed Rising and what they want to do. Um, like perhaps doing like some fun like college trips like of colleges that are really well known for their teaching system or some good community service to like work with kids and just doing stuff like that. I feel like people or students who are really interested in going into education, they would really enjoy those sort of things. And I feel like advertising it in that way that we could grow a strong community together, that we can do fun things together. I feel like that will definitely make them want to join and become interested in this more. And even people who aren't really in Educators Rising, who aren't really sure what exactly they want to do for their career, maybe it'll get them thinking, hmm, maybe I should look into some teaching some more because this is something I've kind of thought of, but I'm not really sure if I want to commit. But yeah, that's about all that I have. I love to hear, you know, the two amazing points were brought up. One is using the blueprint, resources that are available to you. This is available on the website. This is available by reaching out. And then what Zay mentioned, student involvement, the importance of student voice. You know, if we, if you start something and you're not involving your students, it's not, you're not doing it for the students. You're doing it for yourself. Green, if you could be involved in starting and grow your own program at your school, like you mentioned in high school, there wasn't this opportunity to get Ed Rising or something along those lines. So if you could go back to high school and, you know, be able to build a program such as Educators Rising, a grow your own program for teachers, what would you do? Who would you talk to? What would you tell people? So I think the, mo I think for the me, the main thing that I would do is reach out to my peers because I feel like um, I feel like it's our job just to you know unite as one and then try to see if there's more people interested. Of course, so we'd be able to actually make this a club. Then I would reach out, you know, just advocate the importance of the reason why I feel like there needs to be this at our school because a lot of people don't realize um, the importance of teaching or all that goes into teaching and how it really shapes. The future of others so just you know advocating for the profession and why we would need the club and then once i get like students on board then reaching out to you know finding an advisor and just advocating or like doing fundraisers so we can raise money but i just feel like it, um i would mostly i would mostly i think hone in on advocating for the importance of the profession but also trying to show people that teaching is not, teaching is fun because a lot of people outside of the teaching profession are like, oh, you're a teacher? Or they're like, oh, you know, like they, people have this preconceived idea of teaching and just, you know, advocating that the importance of it, but also it is fun. Like it is enjoyable. You get, or my, the thing that I enjoy getting most out of it is seeing my students grow and learn. So there are, there are amazing points from teaching and just advocating and telling people and sharing that. That's what I would miss the hone in on. I love to hear it. And once again, the point is brought back student voice. You know, it starts with the students talking amongst each other. Alil's mentioning, you start with your students. You start with your peers. You don't go straight to a teacher and say, hey, I'm gonna start this program. Well, you need to get your students on board too, your peers on board too, you know? These are the people that you're trying to get. And that's what Educators Rising is all about. That's a perfect example of what Educators Rising needs. Students who are willing to advocate, to be part of that change, to change that stigma that education is worth it. Being a teacher is worth it. It's fun. It's a great time. Sure, there may be hardships here and there, but, you know, it's something that's rewarding. And, you know, us as students, um, it's important for us to talk about it. And, you know, to anyone out there wanting to start it, this is something like everything that everyone's been saying is amazing resources and ways to go about this. But yeah, let's go on to our next question. 
So there's the many and different leadership opportunities that students can participate in. Um, when I was in when I was in high school, I was the um, chapter president for my chapter, and then I became an ambassador, which we'll talk about a little bit, a national ambassador. And then I became the national president this past year, which was an amazing op opportunity. I learned so much from it. Um, and there's so many out there, you know, on the chapter level, on a regional level, on a state level, on a national level. Um, so Zane Page and Aliyah, you know, you're all coming from different states. Um, tell me a little bit more, like what kind of leadership opportunities should students be encouraged to participate in? We'll go ahead and start with Paige. All right. Um. As far as leadership opportunities go, I feel like there's many different ways you can go about it. I feel like one of the bigger ones that might be the most exciting to people, um, to students, would be little ways slash like mini lessons that they can teach. Because, you know, obviously they're interested in becoming educators too. And what people don't realize is teaching isn't just becoming strictly a teacher like there's different levels of teaching like teaching younger kids like how to tie a shoe that is that is considered teaching you know and there are plenty of little many ways that they can do this that they can take on this opportunity and i feel like just doing that will help them become a lot more prepared for when they go into the real teaching world and will help them become a lot more excited for it if they've already had some experience with it, but they want to take it to like the next level. Um, there's also like Ed Rising office positions, like what was already mentioned uh, within the chapter, within state, within national, uh, a national level. And I think the only other leadership opportunity that I can think of that I feel like students would enjoy would be just kind of volunteering in general, specifically for like working with other people, like helping out younger kids, maybe kind of watching over them for the day, kind of babysitting them, stuff like that, you know? It really does make a difference. It really does make students more excited about learning. It gives them some experience and that is all that I have for this. Thank you so much, Paige. Um, let's go on to Aaliyah. So what kind of leadership opportunities should students be encouraged to participate in, whether it be in Ed Rising or in the classroom or anything of that sort, you know, around when we're talking about education and teaching? Okay, so um, I kind of like this question. I like that it, what kind of leadership opportunities should you be encouraged to participate in? I think, if you have the capacity to take on a leadership opportunity, go for it. Even if, if I feel like I feel like if you think that you're not capable of it, maybe take some time to consider it. But oftentimes we think we're not able to do things and then you do it and you're like, wow, I can't believe I did that. Like I thought I wasn't gonna be able to do that in the beginning. So um inside or outside of the classroom, because I understand a lot of us may not be inside of the classroom, but inside or outside of the classroom, whether that be like tutoring or doing extracurricular activities like any type of leadership opportunity that you can do that you feel like would help acclimate you like with the with responsibilities or tasks that you might have to do or will do later on in the profession um i would just take on of course you know take it as a learning opportunity because they all are but if you are able to take it i would absolutely say you should it doesn't matter where where the opportunity lies. If it's as a soccer coach somewhere at an after school program, if it's teaching Sunday school, wherever the opportunity lies, it's gonna be, you're gonna learn something from it, so. Yes, I love to hear, you know, um, Aaliyah talking about, um, you know, just going for it, even if you're hesitant about it, just go for it. It reminds me of me when I applied to become the national student president for Educators Rising. You know, I applied being very hesitant. I'm like, oh my gosh, am I even a good enough person? Am I qualified for this position? Am I fit to be president? Am I fit to be the face of Educators Rising as a student? And I was like, you know what? Just apply, go for it. We'll see what happens. 
And, you know, I don't regret making that decision, you know, and I'm pretty sure Zayn is in the same position being the president of this amazing organization. You know, you learn so much from it and you can gain so much from it, not just um, being the face of an organization, but meeting so many people. So with that said, I want to move it on to Zayn. What kind of leadership opportunities should students be encouraged to participate in? So great. So I think, you know, it depends on the type of student that we have that we're talking about here, right? Um, for me, I'm an outgoing person. I love to network. I love talking to people. So, you know, a role for like national president or, you know, on the state level, that's that's my type of thing, right? But if we're talking about somebody who doesn't like to do a lot of talking, but wants to be involved, maybe that's being a, a recording secretary. Or maybe, you know, like like Paige said, maybe that's teaching a, a small lesson. So I think it just depends on the type of student. Um, which I, if I was a teacher, I will always push students to go for a leadership opportunity because there's so much you can learn from them and so many people you can learn from, um, you know, through this opportunity. So the leadership opportunities that I think um, I would encourage students to participate in is the ones that are going to challenge them. Um, so like, if you know that you like, you know, if you know that you want to be helped, right, but you don't know how to do it or you're not a very shy person, that's fine. Okay, maybe then you could be a recording secretary, right? Because there's not a lot of talking doing, um, but your point, you make your point across, right? So it depends on the type of student. Again, like I said, I think it really depends on the type of student, but I'm going to push students to do leadership roles to that really figures out what type of person you are. And then with that being said, figure out what type of teacher you can be. Because a teacher essentially is just an, a leader, right? It's a leader of the classroom. So taking these leadership roles can discover a whole lot about yourself you would never knew you, felt, you wouldn't know. I love that response so much. I mean, it reminds me, you know, it shows that Zane's ready to become a teacher. You know, we talk about students with different learning styles, kinesthetic learners, visual learners, auditory learners. He, Zane said, you know, whichever is best fit for you, you go for it. Um, and that's what I love to hear. You know, that that's a prime example of what educators, Rise Music members are able to learn. Um, and another thing, when it comes to leadership opportunities, Educators Rising offers leadership opportunities for all kinds of students, not just becoming a national officer or ambassador, the different competitions that are offered. So Ethical Dilemma, um, Insider Schools, Exploring Careers, Lesson Planning and Delivery, Creative Lecture, you know, these are different ways. You don't just go to a room and you present something. It's everything before that. You're doing research about a topic that you're passionate about, something that you want to know more about. So it's awesome how Educators Rising provides these opportunities for all kinds of students who want to be part of the change and become teachers. And then I think that might be our last question unless we have another one. Oh, uh, yeah. Actually, um, so I'll go do, Jose, we have a question in the chat. Oh, um, and I would love the students to answer this one because um, I'm a former teacher of education professions and I know some good activities, but I want you to tell me when you were in your school or you were in class, what are some, or even in your profession now, Aaliyah, what are some good classroom activities that we can do with our students that will engage ninth grade freshmen to want to be participatory? We know they're, they're young, they're eager. Um, what can we do? What are some good classroom activities to engage our ninth graders to continue on and be interested in education, what would you suggest as a student? Um, can I actually have a moment to think about that question? I think the ugh, the ninth grade is what's really <laughs> making me, I need to think a little more about that for the grade level. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe Zane or Paige, Paige you are, you're a junior. So maybe if you were a ninth grade student, what, what activity would get you engaged into and excited about education professions and going into education? And I can speak as a former teacher um, to the question. I had 112 um, freshmen just placed in my class and they did not sign up for that. They did not want to be there. They were not wanting to be educators. And out of 112, 110 of them went on to second year as, their, as a sophomore year. Um, and I taught a four-year program. So for me, the classroom activities were letting them observe um, daycare, preschool, younger students, a lot of observations, not directly working with children just yet because they're not prepared to do so. Um, writing lesson plans, role playing, I would give them little slips of paper with grade level on it. And they had to pretend like a preschooler, a first grader, and then the other person had to pretend like a teacher. Um, we had game days where we had to do developmentally appropriate practices. We created games 
we created activities for certain age groups. Um, and then we did a couple of field trips down to local elementary schools. Um, we were close enough to be in walking distance, so that was helpful. Um, but those are some things that I did to get my ninth graders engaged. And I will say, um, in my experience with education professions courses, all it takes is one engaging teacher that they want to be like. And if they see themselves in you, I had a student look up to me and say, did you go to school to do this? You have fun every day. How did you go to school to do this? And I said, exactly, I'm doing what I love. And now I get to inspire others. And now I get reached to, out on Facebook from 25, 30 year olds who are like, I'm a chemistry teacher, I'm a preschool teacher, or they're telling me about um, developmentally appropriate practices that they use with their own children that I taught them. And that just gives me goosebumps. So it takes that one inspiring teacher to start that movement at a school. I'm a firm believer of that. And then when you get those activities going, they go, oh, I do like kids. I do want to be part of this. I love this. So maybe Paige, you could talk about maybe some things you did as a sophomore, and that might be close to ninth grade, maybe something that would excite you. And then I'll turn it over to uh, Zane to talk about ambassadors. All right. Well, actually, right now I'm currently taking at my school an intro uh, to education slash exploring education course. So I haven't been taking it for very long because this is only my second week of school. But one of the most interesting and engaging things that I do in my classroom um, is my teacher. It's really not a sort of a normal class where you take out your textbook, you read through these pages, you write down some notes, and then you discuss about it a little bit. It's like, okay, um, today we're going to discuss about these different things. What do you think teachers have, have to do to prepare for when they're gone for a day? What do you think teachers have to do um, to engage their students? It's interesting conversations like that that really make you think about all the work that goes into teaching, but also the fun and the rewarding parts of teaching. That is my favorite part currently of the class that I am taking right now. I'm not sure how much um, excitement freshmen will have towards this because so they're just out of middle school and they might not be, you know, as excited to join in the education pathway as I and some other up, upperclassmen are, but to some of them, they might really enjoy this and they, they might become really passionate about teaching and gain a lot of knowledge from it. So yeah, that's about all that I have. Thanks, Paige, I appreciate it. And then um, we're gonna turn it over to Zane to talk about our ambassador program. Sure thing, so yeah. So um, this year we're looking for our ambassadors. The applications are, are now open. Um, and an ambassador, you know, we're looking for students who are, you know, who are education driven. Um, it's, it's for them to amplify their voices in critical national conversations, right? So the, these things are, it's just the same role as I am, right? We're, it's just different titles. So they're doing the same things I am. They're speaking their mind. They're, you know, speaking their mind on social media. They're talking about the organization, um, spreading the word about the organization, about the web, whatever's being, right, whatever's being done. Maybe that'd be webinars coming up, or maybe that'd be the conferences, you know. So those are the ones that are out there talking to the people, getting people engaged, and getting them involved. Um, so on the national level, you get to meet so many different people. Um, and so that, yeah, like I said, the ambassador applications are not open. And so if you know anyone who wants to be an ambassador, who wants to further their education career um, and learning some more knowledge about the education field, you tell them to, uh, you know, sign up to be an ambassador. Um, like I said, it's, it's, if it's not for that person, push them because it might open their eyes to something new and different, okay? So push them to uh, join and, become an ambassador they can meet so many great people i can meet them um i can meet them and learn 
learn so much from them. So please, like I said, the ambassador applications are open and this is just another leadership role for them to put on their resume, right? To put on their college resume. It's, it's another leadership role, you know, that they can take far beyond college, right? They can say, well, I was ambassador for a national organization, right? And so they're gonna say a national organization. Yes, a national organization. So if you know anyone who's looking to be an ambassador, who wants to spread more words about, spread their ideas about what they think about the education field, um, but not sure how to do it, educators prizing ambassadors, that is the place for them to be. All right, thank you so much, Sam. Um, just to let you guys know, the next webinar is September 23rd and we have a panelist, uh, Albert just put it in the chat, um, Department of Education. Uh, it's gonna be such a great webinar. We also have past webinars that are recorded on how states are growing their own to address this teacher shortage. Um, next slide, Michael. With that being said, I know all of you are like, where are the resources? What do we give to our teachers? Um, I am here to tell you, we have a curriculum for you. We have tutoring solutions for you. We have ways to get your students um, enrolled at membership at the national level. Um, and I'm going to tell you a little secret. Um, we're running a little deal until November 1, if we can get you the curriculum, we'll throw in a planning year at a very discounted rate as well. So you can start planning what this will look like for school year 22-23 during 21-22, and then we can roll that out in 22-23 if you're not just quite at that point yet. If you're at that point where you already have an organization, you already have a chapter going, we can get you that curriculum, we can get you those tutoring solutions. And what is really great about this is that the curriculum lays out in a one, three, or five day plan. So it fits whatever the teacher needs, has project-based activities, has summative assessments, can help um, prepare for the teacher prep courses and tests that they might have to take, assessments they might have to take to get into college, into the College of Ed. Um, but we want to take that pressure off of our teachers, right? So we've done the work for you. We can hand that curriculum straight to you. Um, another thing that we've realized as a result of COVID is that some of our littles are behind just a hair. So we can take our bigs that are right in front of us and we can have them be tutors to go out into your community and tutor the littles that might need a little extra support, remediation and extension of things that they've they've made have missed out um, on during the, the COVID time. So that's a great way to get your students engaged is to make them um, part of the tutoring package where they're already learning how to do instructional best practices, be culturally responsive, and look at all of these great ways that we can help support our own communities. So if you're at a high school level and you have elementary or middle school levels, the tutoring package is also a great way for you to get involved. So you can contact us at the email on the screen, or you can always reach out to myself or Albert um, we'll be glad to point you in the right direction and get you those resources. We can set up a meeting and go over everything and really target it to your demographics and your needs. Wherever you're at in the cycle of Grow Your Own, whether this is the first time you've heard of Ed Rising or whether you have a full-fledged chapter and you've already got national winners, um, you know, we can help support you at any step throughout that process. And I might just add, this is something that Lisa used to tell me all the time when she was in her other role, which is don't wait until next school year. When we do the planning year, find one teacher who's passionate, find at least one student who's passionate, and then encourage that student to choose a competition at nationals and make it their semester project. And they can do this after school. They can do this, um, you know, it, it doesn't have to be in a class situation right now. Get them started today. Start your Grow Your Own Pathway today. And you'll get other people so passionate about getting, uh, they, they will tell their, their friends and they will tell their friends and they'll tell two people and they'll tell two people. And soon you'll have an education pathway in your program, even before you've set up the curriculum. Thanks, Albert. That's so true. And if you're wondering, well, how am I going to pay for this? Tune into our webinar on September 23rd, and we're going to talk to you about federal funds, which include Perkins, some Title I, some Title II, um, thinking about paying 
for it can be daunting, but I promise you there, when there's a will, there's a way there are funds out there that can help support this. So tune into our webinar on September 23rd as well. Jose, do you have anything else? Um, no, I do not. Um, that's about it. I just want to thank everyone for coming out. Um, shout out to our panelists. Um, I loved hearing everything that you had to say, literally the perfect reflection of what educators members do, how they're able to succeed, how they're leaders. You know, we have Aaliyah in the classroom right now talking about us, talking to us about all of this, you know? Um, but yeah, thank y'all so much. Um, we hope to see y'all at the next um, webinar. And that's all I have to say. Thank you, everybody. We'll stay on and answer other questions that you might have, but otherwise be safe and have a great day. I can answer that live if you would like. Yes, let's do that. Awesome. Um, the question is, can a college professor start an advising at a college? And the answer is absolutely 100% yes. Uh, we have collegiate chapters. Um, I, When I worked in Arizona, we had zero collegiate chapters when I started and we had five when I left and it's just a movement. They are so excited. They're already in the teacher prep program. I utilized collegiate chapters. So they would come and present to the high school chapters. They would um, hold breakout sessions at my state conference. Uh, they were judges for the competitive events at my conference. So the collegiate chapter is essential. I would have a literacy strategy night and they would come and teach the high schoolers literacy techniques and literacy strategies. So um, absolutely get that collegiate chapter started and then that will also propel the high schools that feed in mostly to your college. And Aliyah, you might wanna to speak to this as well. You're at a collegiate level, you were in a collegiate level, yes? So it is possible. Um, another question, I missed the part on how to get the lesson plans. Um, we can give you sample lesson plans, but the lesson plans are one, three, and five days, and they're located within our curriculum. They're not available on the website um, in the full package, but you can contact me and I can get you a preview and we can um, talk about how we can get that curriculum in your hands. Another question, middle school chapters. Absolutely. Middle school chapters can be done as clubs as well. Um, so there's definitely a middle school chapters as well. Um, Dr. Lewis question, are there webinars or booklets to follow in beginning an educators rising chapter at the collegiate level? Albert, you wanna take this one? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, once you come on board with us and you know, as, um, as administrators, you can get access to our um, resources uh, for, for free. Um, and there are, a whole host of uh, booklets, um, turnkey pieces, uh, PowerPoints, uh, little videos on how to get it, get a, um, your ed writing chapter started, both in the high school and the collegiate level. Great and really, uh, Dr. Lewis, if you're willing to be their advisor and you have a, a single student, you are a chapter. You know, we you know the student will pay twenty five dollars a year in uh, dues and we will provide for you um, every month uh, a set of guided questions from our, our um, Monted Cap and Magazine uh, where we have the intersection of research practice and policy and be able to help you guide your students along on the contemporary issues of education today. So uh, Francois, the same answer is true. If you just come onto our site, um, register as, a, as an administrator, as a, a school administrator, as a teacher leader, and we have the same um, type of work. We have the, the, both the middle school and the high school resources are the same, and they, um, a student at the middle school level, they pay $10 a year for the same access that the collegiate level people would get. So middle school and high school are, are also get a great set of resources. And I'll tell you something else. If your state does not yet have a, um, a educators rising uh, state presence, let us know and we'll, 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 make, we'll work to make that happen. But one of the advantages if you don't yet have that, 
your students can compete on the national level this year. They don't have to qualify through state um, as they would when there's a state program. So you can get them to get there right away. And in Hawaii, so then we will all have to go visit there and make sure that your uh, program is doing well. Sharon Reeves asked in the, um, in the chat, is there a charge for our curriculum? Yes, the curriculum um, in its full form is uh, $10,000 a year. However, we almost never provided that price for school. If there is a, um, because we're sensitive to a budgetary needs and so forth. Um, right now, our current program is being run. The you can get two years. The planning year is three thousand dollars, and the uh, curriculum for the following year is six thousand five hundred dollars. Um, and but if you if you find that still a challenge based off of your 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 passion running headlong into the obstacle of budget, let us know. We work with many, many organizations to do funding, to find funding, um, to get um, grants written so that every student in every school can be able to provide our educators' rights. Well, we are at our last minute. If there are other questions, please feel free to contact um, Lisa or myself. Our uh, email addresses are first initial last name at pdkintl.org, and we'd be happy to help you. Oh, th there's a message for you, Lisa, on the, uh, on the question and answers. That is so exciting. That is so exciting. Can we, can we capture that as a testimonial? That is amazing. Yes, and you looks like you're at a, a tech center. So that is outstanding. That will be great. Thank you so much for sharing that. Well, she mentioned that she's looking for a great hook activities. And so well, I can share my personal exactly. Google Drive with you if you email me. Um, <laughs> don't tell anybody, but I I taught Ed Professions as my favorite course. I mean, it's been some years, so it might be outdated, but if you shoot me an email, I'd for sure send you my my personal Google Drive with all my lesson plans from a few years ago. All right, well, we're at five o'clock. I'm gonna be respectful of everybody's time. Those of you who are still on the call, thank you again for being on. Um, panelists, thank you also for joining. I know it's a challenge both from a technological standpoint and, you know, but at the same time, um, rather than try to pull everybody together for a live event, this is a chance for us to reach out to more people and be able to get our students to be able to express their passion and the desire in a way that we may not have been able to do so before. So let's take the silver lining and let's thank everybody, right? Thank you again. Take care. Mm -hmm.